2014's Lisa, the Painful RPG, is one of the best RPG Maker games ever made, and is a staple of the genre. No other game has came close to its perfect mix of difficulty, humour, and soundtrack. Well, maybe Fear and Hunger if we go from the difficulty angle. Still, enough stroking Austin's ego. You're here for a challenge run, are you not? Like most RPGs, Lisa has a roster of party members you can pick and choose to have alongside you. Some are better than others, but their personalities and design may sway you to try them out. I'm personally not immune to this, as I love my favourite party member so much I named myself after him. And since the definitive edition is coming out next month, there's no better time than to show my love for this specific little man and ask the mighty question, can you beat Lisa the Painful RPG with only buckets? Now, obviously you can, because as you may or may not know, Buckets is only unlockable after completing the Roulette minigame, which is only unlockable in Area 2. You can't exactly use an Area 2 party member in Area 1, so we're skipping the first two hours in this video. I do apologise for that. But when we do get him, what are the rules? I can't use any other party member, and I can only use Brad for items. I would have used Cheat Engine to get buckets earlier so this run would make sense, but I don't know how it works and the Lisa community would hate me for it. But enough about that. Let's get onto the run. Now, I would have recorded my entire playthrough, but I accidentally resized the window during it, so all of the footage from before buckets was basically pointless. So, instead for the people who haven't played Lisa, I'll explain the plot as best as I could, obviously kind of skipping over a couple of things, you know. I would recommend you actually playing this game, it is one of the best RPGs I've ever played, but, you know, personal experience. We play as Bradley Armstrong, ex-martial arts instructor and a joy addict. He and his friends Sticky, Cheeks and Rick are all living in post-apocalyptic Olathe after an event known as the White Flash took all of the women. Brad finds a little baby girl in one of his choked up hazes and begins looking after her, giving her the name Buddy. After several years and Buddy growing up, Brad comes back from another drug fueled vendor to find that Buddy has been kidnapped and is on his way to find her. I know that's not really as much, I'm kind of skipping over the entirety of Lisa the First, the thing with Marty, all of the stuff with like rando but like i said play the game after gathering all we can in area one in terms of roulette fodder plus bits of joy consumables and equipment we make our way to area two so we can actually get the run started terry nern olan rage percy beastborn fardy rooster mad dog geese and queen roger was then sacrificed to the roulette gods giving us our pistolier and officially starting the run. Buckets is a glass cannon, only having around 1000 HP and 300 SP, but he makes up for it with his quick and high damage, only for 15 SP a turn. Since we gathered all of our companions too, we can kit him out with some accessories and armour, plus the Sunsetter which we got for completing the roulette house. And what better way to test out his damage by fighting Blake the Snake? which Buckets easily defeats in two turns. Yeah, he's, uh, he's kind of he's kinda really good. That not being enough, I decided to test his strength against another Joy Addicted party member, but I'll, uh, I'll let the footage explain. Yeah, Tiger Man don't fuck around. I make my way over to the construction yard to get the TNT, dealing with Horace in the process. His fight was alright, it's just a bit spongy. I will however mention that Bucket's best skills are the first ones he has. Bullet Tap hits for insane damage, around 1500 at starting and 3000 by late game, and his coin flip has a 50% chance to stun enemies for a few turns. I do some pretty reasonable damage to boot, at least when you get the equipment. And then a few turns, Horus goes down and we make off with the TNT, as well as some diesel firebombs. I decided to stop by the village to deal with Doctor, as I needed to stock up in joy for the bucket wearing body. I also forgot the locket item, but 
that's because I forgot it existed. Still, not like we really needed it. On the topic of joint maintenance, next was Henry Wyatt, since I recruited Bo earlier with the truck key trick. It wasn't too hard either, mostly just targeting Brad, which is a best case scenario with joint mutants. After getting the 100 mags from Bo, I made it over to Skulltown to stock up on the best consumables, both horse meat and fancy perfume. The fact I only had two party members meant I didn't have to buy any more equipment other than the ones with buckets and maybe Brad, so I basically had 2000 mags to freely spend. Continuing on with our fatherly adventure, I head over to Wally to get Buddy back. Chris and Mark were your standard two enemy fight, even if Chris nearly destroyed buckets with a single karate chop. Granted, Mark actually did. Not once. Not twice. But fucking three times. Still, spamming bullet tap and horse jerky resulted in a quick but slightly annoying victory. Our next fight, if you don't count the various deer, was Little Nuggy. He was the first Joy Mutant to actually use the lick, which made Bucket so pissed off he clocked himself in the face and punched Brad when he went to heal him. I will also mention that Brad is allowed to attack in cases where he can't help it, if it's a fight where I don't have Buckets available or the ending section of the game. But all in all, besides the issues with getting pissed and Buckets getting down twice, it wasn't a hard fight. Next was Wally himself, who I used the poison water on. Honestly, I wish I kept him for a later fight, it would have made that one much easier, but we'll save that for later. This fight did actually make me test out buckets with the drunk status, but it actually makes him a lot weaker than if he just didn't have it. Still, the fight's the same like the rest, down a couple of times and spamming bullet tap, you know. After passing through the Marty Armstrong meat cave, we find Buddy and get captured by Buzzo, who tells her we're a very bad man. I mean, he's not wrong. We killed how many people for a guy with two guns? Anyway, he feeds us joy and we go into a drug coma for a couple minutes, having to fight a giant phallus based off Sticky. Yeah, I wish I was joking, but you know, drugs. After we wake up, we rush over to the Area 3 border to find Chris, Brad's old Billy, hot on Buddy's trail. And to slow us down, he sends his boys after us. I'm so happy I didn't have to have a former friend, otherwise it would have been a major pain in my ass and a possible run killer. But these guys are a bit easier to manage. Larry kept buffing himself with Iron Body and Tom kept knocking both Brad and Buckets onto their asses. But with a bit of help from a firebomb and some patience, the three went down. After a walk through a cave, we made our way to the EWC, and I decided to partake in the Eternal Championship. Why, you may ask? Belt. Though I quickly rose through the ranks, defeated Death Queen, and got the belt, forever ruining wrestling. As if the latest WWE 2K games hasn't already. I encountered Sticky and Rick, letting them go so I could fight Sticky later, and got ambushed by Buzzo. I did switch out my party so I could kill the three that were in my box, and because I don't want the child's nipple in my inventory. I then got my arm cut off by Mr. Buttfart, and I wish I was joking but that's his actual name, and made my way to the final area of the game. So the objective here is to collect four items to construct a makeshift boat, so we have to harass three warlords and some Native Americans guarding a sacred tree. First on the list is Hog Hollywood, and the call for the sale. Luckily, whilst you're in the area, you can get the stubby pistol from Chester, which is the strongest handgun available. And considering we'll get another one for free, Buckets is basically at his top tier. Hog's fight went alright. The only problem being the fact that he can give himself super cool, which regens 1000 HP per turn. But luckily the firebomb I started off with, as well as bullet tap, were enough to out damage his healing. And before long, Hawk was down for the count, and we got some cloth for our troubles. Next up is the Snow Mountain, and Buffalo Van Dyke. This fight was actually really easy when I stopped being an idiot. I actually got my first game over here, which was quite interesting, like around three areas into the run. Hmm. But the fight itself was fairly standard, just one firebomb then dealing with his lackeys until they're all gone, then you deal with Puff himself. A shame you don't get many multi-person fights, it would have been a bit of a challenge to see how Buckets would have handled it. I took a little detour to go to the Zor Island so I can get some of the items that were there, 
before I made it to the Devil's Backers. Spinny V was your standard one-on-one -on -one fight, but it did break Brad's neck. But, you know, it doesn't matter. Afterwards, I thought it was a great idea to try and fight BD without saving, and, you know, you can imagine how that went. Not fun. Next was the Bath Boys themselves, and honestly, they went down really easily despite there being seven of them. The front ones could be softened up with a firebomb and dealt with a bullet tap, and Han spends most of his time just meditating to do anything useful. After that, we take the fan and head on to the final part. Bloodiest Wolf wasn't bad either. To be honest, most of the late game fights are kind of one note. So, with everything out of the way, and really only leaving like one fight, it was time to fight BD. It did give Brad a little chomp, but it's way easier than the last attempt. And with that, comes the start of my greatest challenge yet. Mick Mnemonic is the strongest enemy in the game, with two instant kill moves and a big fat 80,000 HP pool. First attempt, uh, not so good, but hey, we'll form a strat. And boss taking a break to make some lunch, that I very much did. The strat was to try and deal as much damage per turn, but also make sure he doesn't do the insta-kill on buckets. Sadly, since we used our last firebomb on Han, all we have is two pieces of TNT and a bottle of Dirty War. Dirty War inflicts poison, by the way, which is incredibly busted. In our normal playthrough, I'd use Fly Minetti's puke ability to deal both normal and deep poison, which would absolutely demolish his HP bar every turn. So, every tick of poison deals 80,000 damage, and our buckets dealing 10,000 damage from a coin flip or 3,000 damage from the bullet tap we might be able to knock him down quite a lot, depending on if we're lucky. The two pieces of TNT, however, deal 2,000 damage on the explosion, and the front burning, which deals 4,000 damage per turn. Keep that in mind that damage over time effects deal damage and scale of the character's HP, so these values are 1 to 1 in regards to every boss, just so, just so you know. So, the plan was to deal as much damage to him before we can use an insta kill move. Or just, you know, pray to god and hope it does pokes and power bombs. Which we got after 7 attempts, getting Meg's belt buckle. Too bad I can only use this on buckets for one fight, being sticky, who goes down incredibly easily. Words, Brad and Tardy build the boat and sail off, leaving any party member he had and heading off to the island to find Buddy. I beat Tardy, win like 2 turns, find Marty and beat him to death too. I wake up, use Tardy's body to float to Randallland, kill Mr. Anganelli, and get Brad to the failure. Brad then comes face to face with Randall and his army. Luckily, before we fight them, we have to deal with a possible hallucination of our party. I deal with Buff in the shadow before finishing off Buckets. Good night, sweet prince. You did well. I deal with the Randall army, deal with Randall himself, get a hug from Buddy, and proving that you technically can beat Lisa, the painful RPG, with only Buckets. This challenge was a lot of fun, and it makes me sad this guy only has an 8% recruit rate, because he's actually pretty damn good. Now, sadly that ends this challenge here, since there's not really a way I can play joyful with buckets, unless someone were to, let's just say, make a mod where he was a party member, but, you know, we'll do that at a later date. Possibly sometime before the definitive edition comes out. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Share your thoughts in the comments, and I hope your day goes well. My name is Buck Taylor, and I'll see you all later. Also, yes, this was very much inspired by Nurbit. Please go check him out if you haven't.